Hi everyone and welcome to the Storzar channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the advanced essentials presets. If you haven't already, then go and check out the video where I show you how to import your presets. And once you've done that, let's begin. Once the presets have been installed, you'll find new folders in your effects tab under the generators, text and effect folders. Let's start with the effects. Here you'll find four subfolders, handy tools, video effects, zooms, and screen plus camera effects. Handy tools is a section of five tools I use every day. There are two drop shadows, one that's a hard drop shadow and the second, which is a soft and blurry one. There's a super smooth camera shake here to add a little motion to your edits. And then there are two transform effects. The first one is for adding rounded corners to PNGs by using the edge rounding settings. And the second is a drag and drop transform with motion blur already turned up. This one is super useful and we'll be using it later on. Onto video effects and this arrow motion preset. Drag this onto an arrow and you will get a pointing arrow with motion. You can then use the transform effect to change the arrow's position. But spoilers for later, this pack also includes an arrow generator, which we'll see in a bit. Next, there's the blue screen ultra key, which is used to get rid of blue screens. You can change the intensity of the blue using the sliders or the eyedropper. There's also a sensor bar, which you can change the position, height, length, and intensity of. Onto this corner pin. This is especially useful for making images appear on screens within your scene, as it skews the perspective for you. To use this, change the position of the corners within the preset settings. If we change the order around on the timeline and remove the blue screen, it now looks like Finn is being projected onto the screen. There are two different film grains included. One that's harsher and uses the noise effect, and then one that's softer and uses Da Vinci's film grain effect. There are also two different glitch overlays to play with. These pair up nicely with any screens that you may have corner pinned your footage onto. Head swirl is an effect mainly for PNG characters, and it makes your face do this. Use the position variables in that effect to move the swirl around. There's also an iPhone grade included, which is a quick color grade to get rid of overblown whites that iPhone cameras seem to add to images. Onto the tracker and transform, which is essentially a really cool advanced stabilizer. I'll demonstrate how to use this with the footage of a band playing on stage that I captured. Add the effect and go into the effects fusion page by clicking this button here. Now select the macro tool in the bottom left. You'll have a whole bunch of settings appear. First thing to do is draw around the area you want to stabilize just by clicking on the screen and drawing around the shape. In this case, the stage. Make sure the playhead is where you want the tracking to begin. Then press the set button. Then press this track to end button, which will set the tracker off. It will add a load of keyframes to your clip, which you can then see have just been added there under the playback window. Now change the operation mode to stabilize, and you can see that your footage has been stabilized. Back onto the edit page, you'll notice that using the transform setting will lead to some harsh cropping if you zoom in. Here's where you can add the transform with motion blur from the handy tools to zoom in, and that's fully stabilized. Moving on to the zooms. These are best added to an adjustment clip. So let's add one. Then just add one of these super handy smooth zooms and, oh, it's not working. As of filming, there's a small glitch in DaVinci, which means the adjustment clips are slightly broken. However, there is a super easy fix. Just remove the preset, then on the blank adjustment layer, go into the fusion page, then back to the edit page. The adjustment layer is fixed just like that, and we can add presets to it. I recommend adding a blank fixed adjustment layer to your media pool, and then you can drag and drop this onto your timeline and everything will work as it's meant to. So let's add our huge zoom in and then change the pivot point so that we can zoom into a different spot. You can also change the length of the zoom by pressing this arrow, which aligns your playhead with the keyframe. And then we can change the size. There are also zooms out. To use these, just add another fixed adjustment layer and drag and drop your zoom out onto it. You just need to make sure that your pivot points are the same on both adjustment layers if you've changed them. There are presets for a huge zoom with camera shake, little zoom, little zoom with rotate and more, as well as a continuous zoom, which adds a small amount of motion to the entire clip that it's placed on. There are also presets with the zoom in and out already programmed. However, these can only be added to full screen PNGs and not videos. Otherwise you'll get this weird pause effect. 
onto the screen and camera effects. First are a bunch of lens distortions. This will distort any footage underneath them, which works really well when something moves on screen as it has this distorted look around the edges. There are some pretty extreme versions here, like this one with a vignette, which you can see with some smooth motion, looks really cool. Next is a lens flare, which you can make a scene seem more cinematic with. Then a selection of vignettes, including a square vignette and two keyframed vignettes, one of which comes in fast and the other slow. Also a spotlight, and then a white vignette. Finally, a rounded corners crop. Let's start with the rectangle. As you can see, we now have this rounded corners crop within the frame. You can move this around using the settings within the preset, and then you can change what's in the frame using the clip's own transform settings. Let's pair this up with some lens distortion. You may find that your presets are in the wrong order, and you can move them around using these small arrows. Now the lens distortion is within the rectangle. You can adapt any of these presets further with the crop tools. For example, we can crop around the face. Then let's go to handy tools and add some camera shake or perhaps some drop shadow. Now, if you go to the titles folder, you'll find the advanced essential subtitles section. These include a whole bunch of cool subtitles like 3D length. If we slow that down, you can see it has a cool small flash. There's also a 3D width. We also have two speeds of this blur in, some bouncy text and more. And finally, something brand new for our DaVinci presets, a selection of generators. First, an arrow generator. Just drag the preset onto the timeline and it'll add this arrow with motion to your project. You can move this around the screen and change the angle so that it points wherever you want. You can even add things like drop shadow to this. Next, a blue sky gradient, helpful for creating a simple background. And finally, a white bar effect. Just drag this over the top of your footage and it will add this white wipe effect. This pairs really nicely with something like a sword sheathing sound effect. There are six different directions of the wipe to choose from. Make sure that you go and check out www.storesart.com, sign up to our mailing list and stay up to date with our most recent presets and courses. And also subscribe and make sure to check out our other tutorials on our other presets. All right, see you later.